Hello, and welcome back. We're playing more Terraria. We are playing as uh, Bilona Torres once again. Um, we just finished going down fairly far through an annoyingly extensive network of underwater lakes, which we just dug straight through and built our elevators straight through all of those lakes. Um, Oh! Oh, are they learning to speak common? Ah! Cool. They know one word in common. I think it's, uh, we're figuring it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out, eventually. Um, that's awesome. So, we were gonna continue, um, digging down into the depths, but I think, well, Balana's thinking that there's probably some things to be seen out in this direction as well, so we should be careful and proceed forward and uh, see if we can find any other any other clues <coughs> on this planet and uh, maybe we can find more crashed escape pods as well so that's what uh, that's what we're hoping for we're hoping to find any more crashed escape pods or any other kinds of uh, alien technology that maybe we can use and um, hopefully we will come out unscathed but of course, we're not afraid to have a have a tussle with a slime monster or two. Perfect. So we're just gonna dance through this water. We're not afraid of water any longer. Um, of course, we, we know Balana's history with water, um, and it, she's not a huge fan of water. But um, she's experienced enough water at this point that pretty much she'll, she's ready for anything at this point. If it involves water, she can handle it. She's been through through hell and back when it comes to water. Um, she also just murdered an innocent squirrel, but as far as Balana is concerned, the squirrel had it coming because, ouch, don't you dare! You dare challenge me? I will destroy you in honorable combat, you monster. Oh no, I'm taking some hits. Come here, you bitch. You patah. Ouch. Stop it. I'll throw shurikens at you. Yeah, take that. Alright. There's eyes floating around. They're aggressive. We're hiding. There's a lot of eyes. Um... Balana just took one look at those demon eyes and noped, noped straight the fuck out of there because these things do not seem like the type to fight an honorable fight. They seem like the type to be super annoying and aggressive and to be very difficult to fight. Um, so she's just going to sit here with her bow that was gifted to her by the friendly native um, <clears throat> inhabitant of this world. And she's going to sit here and fire arrow after arrow into these horrible monsters, um, hoping that they never speak to her again. And it seems to be working. They seem to be dying. They're dropping, like, some weird stuff. They're dropping, like, coins and what looks like a lens. But that seems strange. Why would a flying eye have money? Why would a flying eye need money? Why would it have money at all? Oh no. This zombie has a very long arm and uh, is very aggressive. And we may need to abandon this its expedition. But 
Oh no. We just found something valuable, so we're gonna go home. Hey. <laughs> okay. We found a jagged shackle. It provides 1% additional damage and also one defense. So that's excellent. Oh, we found a bunch of stuff. This stuff apparently dropped. Oh no, we, we mined that. Okay. Or did we? Yes, we did. We can drop off that iron and these lenses and some stone and we want to hold on to this gel. And we want to drop off the potion. Okay. Actually, maybe we don't want to drop off the potion. <clears throat> okay. Um, next step. We can't exactly go adventuring out in the open because there are very rude and dishonorable flying eyeballs that carry coins and drop lenses. And they're interfering with our work. Um in very real ways, so Balana thinks that it's probably the best plan to just continue digging down, straight down, toward the power source that powers the energy field. So, mm, she's seeing with her sight a zomb a skeleton trying to get into her location, and uh, it's not having a very good time of it, so she's pretty sure it's going to be fine. Um, Yeah, there seems to be a conveniently located um, outcropping of rock that's preventing that skeleton from getting to her, and of course accosting her and being very aggressive. So this is good. We want to avoid uh, encounters with aggressive skeletons, um, if possible. Not because we fear the fight, just because we know it will interfere with our plans. So, we're digging straight down. And we're no longer afraid, we're no longer worried of uh, about being uh, encased in water for 40 minutes at a time. We're not worried about that at all, because we've already done it. And we know how to survive. We know the page on which the handbook references how to survive such situations. And um, we've been through it all. We've, we've, even, we've even found... Um, um, what are they called? An errata. We've we've discovered the errata in the um, handbook, where <clears throat> it stated absolutely nothing about situations where you're encased in where you where you're where you're encased in water. Um, but in fact, we we've discovered that there in fact is a strategy, and you can deal with it. Um, and it's probably no big deal to deal with it. It's just that the humans are mm, not practically minded. And so they care more about their ethics and their outdated vision of um, non-intervention and, uh, and, and all that junk. They care more about that than actual progress and, uh, and effectiveness. So... That is the ultimate reason why the humans fail. There's a skeleton throwing... Throwing his own bones? Throwing his own bones... At us. Uh... From... From underneath us. Which is a little bit... Weird. To be honest. Oh! How about ye? A bat tried to get into this corridor with us, which is not great. And the skeleton is continuing to try to attack. Let's just find a more advantageous location uh, from which to attack this skeleton. Because uh, it is able to use its bones as projectiles, which is odd. And uh, that also bugs us. We don't want that. We don't like the, th the fact that that skeleton is able to do that. So we're gonna maybe... Oh no! 
Silar was chewed up, chopped up by a demon eye, which I have now uh, suddenly perfect information about. I know when it happened, I know what happened, I know... I don't know where it happened, but perhaps I could find out that information if I looked hard enough. It's very strange to have perfect information about events that happened not using my own senses. There's a dart trap here, we can pick that up. Um, we ran straight over the pressure plate that triggers it. Um, there's another worm over here. We want to fight the worm. Worms are also dishonorable because they attack from the shadows. Come on, you bastard. Fight with honor. Face me! Coward. That worm is a coward? Now that we know that, we're no longer scared of it. Because cowards always fail. Cowards always lose in combat. <clears throat> the moment you show that you're weak is when the enemy knows that they can take advantage of you because when you know that you're fighting a, a, a worthy opponent you don't try certain tactics because you you don't use you don't use those tactics on uh, opponents that you believe are strong because you know they'll be countered but there are tactics that you can use in combat when you suspect that the enemy uh, is not a worthy opponent uh, and it'll work on them but it wouldn't work on a worthy opponent so as soon as you show weakness in combat, you're signaling to your opponent that those tactics will work on you. And you're sealing your own fate, basically. Um, there's actually a lot of science behind it. And Belana, of course, is very familiar with all of that science. Fantastic. Okay. Um, we just destroyed something and I don't, don't know what it was. We're out of torches. Okay, we've got more torches. There's not much happening in this area. Oh! We can use our... Oh no. No! Falling damage. A Klingon's worst enemy. Gravity is always an honorable foe. Okay. Well, we've been revived by the energy field once again. It's a little bit disconcerting once again. But mm, we'll probably just have to deal with that and not worry super hard about it. Maybe we can make this tungsten... these tungsten bars. We've got nine more of them. Oh yeah, we can just straight up make a broadsword. It does 12 melee damage. Um, maybe we don't need it. Very fast speed. This one has just fast speed. Average knockback. Average knockback. Hmm, it's not much of an upgrade. Maybe we just want to hold on to that for now. Okay. Great. What do you got for me, Isaac? We can buy... Um, nothing, because we're broke. Fantastic. Let's just put this stuff away then. There's money in there, but I'm pretty sure some of that belongs to the native Xylar. So maybe we don't want to spend that all right away until maybe we have some better communication nailed down. Um, wouldn't want to offend the friendly native. No, wouldn't want to. Wouldn't want to do that. Okay. Oh, I need more arrows. Can we do that? Yes, we can do that. 
<clears throat> we can also hold on to this gray pressure plate, hold it in our hands. It has like a faint glow. It has like a faint, mm, like you can tell that it was fa it was manufactured by a technologically advanced species. Like you can see, it was crafted with mm, advanced tools. So, <clears throat> Belana is holding onto it and uh, just appreciating the construction. Why did I come up here? Oh yeah, we need arrows. So let's make them. We can grab some of these many, many, many stone blocks. And we can go down here. And we can craft some wooden arrows. So Balana is um, just like super frantically like like Iron Man in the the Iron Man where Iron Man is in the uh, cave and he's building things. He's building the very first Iron Man suit, um, and he's just like making things from scratch. He's just like making tools out of nothing. He makes like the most advanced generator on the planet. Um, in a cave with a box of scraps. That is nothing compared to what Bellana was just doing up there, um, throwing those arrows together. Like, we started out with a pile of twigs and a bunch of rocks, and already Bellana is um, an, a master Fletcher and uh, has been um, masterfully creating all of the arrows that she will ever need in her entire time here. Uh, um, and it's all because of her skill in engineering and science. Excellent. Oops. You want that to be there? Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So we're descending down <coughs> into the depths. Um, we're a little bit out of our rhythm because we have not been doing this for a little while. Already there's more water in our in our area with us. With us. There's a bat descending down. Uh, descending down in here with us. We don't want that. We don't want bats. Um, and we don't want this water here either. So we're going to divert the water. If we can. And then it, it becomes clear that we actually can jump up onto that block where we could not before. Come on, bats. Face me. Die with honor. Alright. Um... We're diverting the water, we're creating little places for it to sit and fester. Alright, perfect. So now we can put a thing here, and a thing here, and then we can continue. Um, we want probably this platform to... Oh, it is alright. It's already there. Okay. We've already done it. Perfect. Okay. We can just put a, put a torch there. Uh, I think that this has to go here. Yes. We can keep going down. Uh, what we really want is a platinum pick. Because with a platinum pick, um, Bellana knows from her um, advanced material science classes that um, platinum is exactly the right um, hardness to break um, most uh, valuable what the fuck is that? Tungsten platinum is the perfect um, density, perfect hardness to break through most advanced metals Ouch, that hurt. Want a tussle? Whoa. 
You are worthy opponent. You are taking a lot of hits and not feeling too bad about it. Cockaneel beetle. I got a red husk. That was an invigorating battle. My god. I almost died. And that beetle was really hard to kill as well. Okay, that's fine. We don't, um... You don't meet a you don't meet a worthy opponent like that every day. Okay, let's bring this down so that we can put um, platforms. Do we care? And then one there probably. Okay, and now we can put this like that. Perfect. Okay. I don't think we need any more tin, particularly. It looks like that skeleton has my money. Um, do we want to go down there? Do we want to, to get revenge on the creatures that, that wronged us in the past? That seems like an attractive option. There was a trap there. There are no traps over here. We can come down here, and break this urn, take that family's ancestral coins, um, then we can build a... We can build a way down, like this. And of course it is physically possible to build like this. Uh, on this world, um, because the density, because this, this, yeah, it's, it's all science stuff. It's all science. Alright, we don't need to worry about it. We can build like that because we can. Okay, let's fight these people. How do we fight them? That's a lot of people, and we don't do a lot of damage. So, how are we gonna, how are we gonna cheese this so that they die and we don't? Let's go down this way. Um, this is of course a, a very dishonorable strategy, but when it comes to taking revenge on your enemies, in some cases it is acceptable to be a little bit dishonorable. Oh wait, there's a slime in here. There's an, a horrible alien slime monster right there. Can, can they get me through here? I don't think they can. So we can fire our bow. Wait, I think we have to do this. That one can't get us. How do we do this? Here we go. Um, just to be safe, let's block ourselves off from this mother slime, because that's good strategy. And then we can sit back here and fire arrows into their faces. And watch and laugh as they die horribly. This will literally be the last time that they ever dance on the corpse of a... Half Klingon, half human. Literally the last time they will ever do this. Okay. Do they understand what they're paying for? Do they understand the, the purpose of their penance? Sometimes I don't know why I even try. Because the creatures that you exact revenge upon often do not understand what they have done wrong. Um, in this case, they, the, the thing that they did wrong, of course, was to um, insult a half Klingon by dancing on her grave. Yes, that is that is the, their mistake. Okay, so Belana is just sitting here in this makeshift tunnel, firing arrows, making them pay. And this cocky Neil beetle is um, dancing up and down quite merrily, I would say. Yes, quite merrily. And, um, ooh, a bomb. We could use a bomb to get vengeance on our enemies. Do we want to use a bomb to get vengeance? I think we do. I think we want to use a bomb, mainly because... When you use bombs, um, um, the enemy often doesn't expect it. 
and then they will they will make mistakes as a result of that. Let's actually get really intimate with the monsters and let's climb down into their zone with them, lure them into a sense into a false sense of security and then throw bombs in their face. I literally did no damage. Let's see, can we do this? Yes. That is how you kill your enemies. That is how you get vengeance properly. Okay. We can just place down a platform at the bottom of this rope ladder, and it doesn't even rotate at all. Like, it's not attached, but it is. It doesn't make any sense. But of, of course, on this world, it does. Hey, we even picked up all the stuff we dropped. That's great. Um, that skeleton is not very clever. Oh no, yes he is. Face me! In honorable combat! I crave battle. I crave violence. Off he goes. He um, obviously didn't have it in him. He chickened out. And he ran away. I was just nearly killed by some silt falling on my toes, which is not great. Um, I'm supposed to be stronger than that, um, and it makes me a little, a, a little uh, anxious, to say the least. How do we kill this? How do we kill this slime? We've got a wooden bow, and we're trying to kill a mother slime. Is this possible? Can we do it? We're firing many arrows. This does not feel very Klingon-like. Oh my god. It's coming this way. It's getting closer. The knockback is not strong enough. But it looks like we're lucky in the sense that... Oh! No, the very thing we were just going to say that we were lucky about uh, is no longer true. I was going to say that it was lucky that we were behind that... <clears throat> barrier and they couldn't get us but then of course you saw what happened and you see you see why what I said was uh, was something that I should not have uttered yes you understand you understand okay um we can harvest that iron we can harvest this tin. Um, okay. Um, hmm. Now what? <clears throat> I suppose we should keep digging that hole. Great. Okay. There's a mouse over there, an alien mouse. Otherworldly mouse. It's doing very strange things. It's doing very strange behavior. Um, okay. Oh no, I hear the sound of a worm. It's being a bastard once again once again where is it come on face me yes you thought you thought all right we can harvest this tin Uh, and we can narrowly avoid spreading all this water everywhere. Perfect. Oh, there's some tungsten here. That's good. That was just some stone. 
Okay. We're going down. Okay, cool. Okay, nice. We're back on track. Building a tunnel straight down. Um, yeah. Great. There's some iron here. Should probably think about maybe harvesting that. We can very carefully reach through the wall and place down some dirt on the other side of this wall so that when we harvest this iron, the water doesn't get through. That is thinking like a terrarian, and it is exactly the kind of forward thinking that it's going to take to survive on this, on this rock. Perfect. We want to also block off these water flows before they become- Oh, there's a Shelly. Is that going to kill me? It looked like it was in a position to do a body slam straight down onto me. And it still may do a body slam. Though it seems like some of the enemies in this in this world don't think to do a body slam in opportunities where they might uh, be well off to do so. So maybe I'm okay. Maybe they're unlikely to actually do a body slam. Because if they did do a body slam, it would be bad news bears. And Belana knows this. Uh, and she's not taking any chances. Except that she actually is. Because if she were not taking any chances, she would of course be trying to get out. But, hmm. It seems like that giant Shelly is just not um, big brain enough to do the body slam maneuver. That seems likely. Okay, we can pretty much assume that it's not... It's not smart enough. Fantastic. It did not go to Starfleet Academy. That's like, um, in your combat tactics class, on like day two, I think, is the day when you learn about the body slam, is actually one of the most effective moves in hand-to-hand -hand combat of any kind of, uh, in, in any kind of martial arts discipline. You always need to do the body slam. Okay, enough about the body the body slam. We're, we found ourselves digging straight down into a, an underwater lake once again, which of course is no nothing new for Balana Torres, because we just did a we just spent a whole lot of time doing exactly that. Um, so so we're not gonna have any trouble whatsoever getting ourselves out of this mess. Perfect. Though the, the, the platform situation is going to get a little bit screwed up um, as we place down platforms in the wrong places because because you jump a different height underwater versus above water. We can just do the little trick with the um, oxygens in the lattice, the crystal lattice over here. Just like right there, I'm just carefully breaking exactly the right um, parts of the crystal, releasing those oxygens. This is super advanced Starfleet stuff. Um, you wouldn't understand. So we can do we can do some of this, and then bish bash bosh, we're done. And down here we are. We can put another wooden platform. Uh, yep, we're good. It's literally e easy, easy peasy. So we can just go straight down, not a care in the world, and um, we can go straight down, not a care in the world, <clears throat> and just dig. And we can basically live our entire life underwater like this. 
um, no problem. So these are the kinds of benefits, by the way, that you will receive if you join Starfleet Academy. So just keep that in mind. If you ever want to live your entire life underwater um, and generate uh, and and generate air out of nothing and generate water out of nothing as well, then you should maybe consider joining Starfleet Academy because there is just so much material. It's like half of the curriculum you can actually spec into it. Like you can major, you can major in um, arcane water conjuration techniques and like they don't call it that obviously because it's actually science and it's real um, they actually call it hydro uh, hydrogenesis advanced hydrogenesis in semiconductor materials um, yep it's a big it's a big thing they have a lot of classes some of the professors are really good don't get Inkman though um, he's universally disliked and when I say universally, I mean universally. Um, yeah. Bad news. Okay. How far have we gone down? It does not look like a lot. Though, to be fair to Bellana, it's probably because the techniques that we're using to dig straight down through lakes are time consuming. And she's not equipped with a fast enough pick to really get the job done. She really needs more advanced tools, so I think the next step is going to be to make uh, that platinum pick, because as we were mentioning before, it has just the right properties to cut through um, the very the much more interesting kinds of of metals, and also it's it's much faster as well. So we probably want to make that as soon as we have enough platinum. Okay, awesome. Oh no, how the hell are we going to get back up? I guess we could die, though <laughs> that's probably not ideal. That's not the ideal solution. We don't want to die as a, as a method for returning to the surface. We know that the ancient power um, device, the, we know that the ancient power generator down here has a lot of power in it, and we know that the energy field is super powerful. It was generating like a super advanced, super powerful um, defensive field. Um, it shot down Voyager, pretty sure. That would be the only real good explanation as to how this happened. Um, but, yeah, we don't want to take any chances. It's possible that if we die, um, it, 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 it may not actually work. It may not actually resurrect us, so we don't actually want to die too many times. And, of course, there is the other danger of potentially going insane from being revived too many times. Fantastic. Okay. We should definitely think about getting out of here. We're just going to harvest the rest of this tin. And... Maybe get out. Think about getting out. We can swim. We can jump really high. Yeah, here we go. Perfect. It's like we never... It's like we never experienced any of that. We're just here on our platform bridge. Our, like, fancy staircase. A lot of these platforms are not actually supported on... on any of their sides. So they're literally just hovering in midair. This is not great, um, but of course, along with all of the other strange phenomenon that are occurring on this planet, we have to just take it at face value and accept that it's that it's the way things are, are done here. Perfect. Um, so we're just jumping on all this stuff. It's boggling um, Bellana's mind, but um, she intends to study all of it with the tricorder once she gets it. So we just have to get through all of the nitty-gritty and uh, potentially time-consuming, very time-consuming uh, efforts to get all of the necessary technology. Excellent. And Bellana is willing to do this uh, 
so we know that it will all work out in the end. Fantastic! Okay, we have so many things to drop off. We're gonna drop off all of that. We're gonna drop off... Uh... There's nothing in this chest. Hey, there's a gold squirrel. Apparently, Xylar found a gold squirrel, which is pretty cool. Um, mm, we maybe want to think about moving some of this to a different ch chest. Maybe... Maybe this and this can all go down here. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Now, anything else we can do? We can grab this tin ore. We can grab all this ore. We can make it into bars. We got 20 more tin bars. We got 12 more iron bars. We got one more tungsten bar. Put those in. That rope shouldn't be there. Iron ore can go there. Tungsten ore can go there. Platinum can go there. Communication is improving with the natives. Uh, that's a very good sign. Okay. So we have four platinum bars, 16 tungsten bars, 41 tin bars. Uh, um, hmm. We're going to need some more materials. Uh... Okay. Is there anything we can do right now? Not really. There's a lot to explore. Okay. <coughs> Balana is realizing it's sink it's starting to really sink in how much work she actually has in front of her. Uh, and is maybe maybe gonna have a rest and and then re return to the task reinvigorated. Okay, so we'll be back next time. Thank you.